This is a Subtrax equipped paddle board with the Subski pole paddles attached. Paddling with the pole paddles is similar to cross country skiing but a lot easier. The board can be powered with both arms together or alternately one side and then the other. Turning is done by paddling on one side only or pushing back on one side and pulling forward on the other while the paddles are in the water. Stopping and reverse is done by engaging the paddles in the rear and pulling forward. You can also sit down and row facing forward. Turning uses the same push-pull technique. Skiing or rowing with the subski pole paddles adds entirely new dimensions to the paddleboard experience. The Subski pole and paddle system is comprised of the paddle, paddle connector, T, end cap, paddle slide box, U-joint assembly, adjustable pole, grip, and the all-important retraction spring and connecting bolts. They all fit together to make a Subski pole paddle. The paddles quickly slide into a Subtrax board and you're ready to go. The turning of the wrist to engage the paddles, releasing at the end of the stroke, both arms together or alternating one side and then the other. An attachable unit has been designed to be made with the same sliding tracks. Adjustable clamps attach the tracks to almost any board which then slide into the proper position and perform like a built-in board. In 2014, I came across a video on YouTube of a woman trying to cross-country ski on water. It was truly pathetic. I felt I could create something better. So I thought about the concept, made some basic drawings, went over to Home Depot and bought a bunch of PVC pipes and plastic sheets and created the first ever SUPSKI, which stands for Stand Up Paddleboard Cross-Country Ski. I found a local paddleboard rental company and went out to the Intracoastal near my house and met with Vivian Kaler. Hi, I'm Guy. And I'm Vivian. And we're here with uh, Power Paddles, or something. Who willingly got on the board and attempted to propel herself. After a few minutes of getting the hang of it, she paddled well out into the middle of the waterway. The design was a success, except for the fact that you couldn't turn very well, and you definitely couldn't stop. But we've seen from this test that Vivian got all the way out almost to that sign there. And I don't have the time on it, but I think it was in less than two minutes. Now, how long would that take normally with a regular paddle board and a paddle? It would take less time, but... A minute? Yeah, right. So right. we're 50% behind? Yeah. 50% behind on the first test of the prototype. Like I said, we got a five pound weight on here because we're hanging out three and a half pounds. This needs to be lighter. Um, the mechanism perhaps could be smoother. There's a lot of things. Needs your money, needs your investment, but we think we have a good product. Thank you. Realizing the shortcomings of the design, I went back to the drawing board. I needed to figure out a way of getting the paddles in and out of the water quickly and have the ability to turn and stop. After many weeks of trial and error, I finally came up with a workable solution. The paddle poles would be connected to a U-joint, which then connected to a paddle, which was able to rotate inside a box that slid up and down a plastic track. A retraction spring was added to assist getting the paddles out of the water quickly. When the poles were rotated, the paddles entered the water and you pushed back on the poles to get propulsion. I recontacted Vivian and we went back to the waterway to test it out. The design worked perfect. Holy cow. Holy cow. 
she is moving. Holy cow. Oh my god. Oh my god, she's fucking moving with that fucking thing. It's a thing of beauty. Oh my god, the sun is fucking coming out. It's a fucking great morning. Oh my god, look at the sun on her. the inaugural launch of the subski and here I am with Ziggy and Melody and Julia and this is the subski it's the first one ever made and allows you to cross country ski on water on a paddle board and Julia is going to be the first person to show us what it's all about Woo! Take it right into shore. That's come good. On, that was good. That, that was good. Oh, come on in. Come on in. There you go. Got the motion. Then I gotta turn around. Yeah, let me click that. Is the last one getting in the water? Yes, now it is. Here's the thinking. The thinking is that I think I would lose a lot of weight just standing alone on the board. Can we coach you on that? Yeah, you can quote me on that because it was, a, you know, for me it was a little, and I'm pretty strong, and, but it was, and then I just, if you, twice I, I was able to do the dip and push, but that was, you know, that's like, that's like doing squats, and it was great. It was great for the, you know, the little bit that I'm not accustomed to doing it. Oh, who wants to invest? It's September 8th, we're at 320 Colonial Road, West Palm Beach, Florida. And I'm standing in front of the world's first subski paddle board and subski paddle system. Tomorrow, this product is going to be released to the world at Surf Expo in Orlando at Action Water Parks, 11 o'clock, September 9th. The world will change forever.
looking for is people who, you know, maybe they do cross country skiing or whatever. Yeah. Together, you got to work. That's what's uh, the first thing. Hey, this is Guy from Subski Manufacturing Corporation. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our product. We have it attached to a paddleboard here with Velcro. The tracks can attach anywhere you want on a board that's been equipped with Velcro. We just cut out the deck pad a little bit and put strips of Velcro down here. If we, look, if we put it here where it doesn't hang over the end of the board, our center of gravity is a little bit forward and we might nosedive. So basically, we're operating it where we're hanging part of the product, part of the unit, off of the back end of the board. This allows us to stand here in the proper position and get the energy that the paddles provide. The way the mechanism works, paddle boarder stands here, pulls this forward, adjusts the length of the pole to whatever size they need, Rotate the paddle into the water, push back, and get forward propulsion. It's as simple as that. And as you saw in the video, or you're going to see in the video, we can do turns. We can alternate both, both sides together, or one side and then the other. Oh, I love it. Now I'm grabbing it. Yeah, I'm grabbing all that, so whether you use it or not, who knows.
whenever you're ready. I'm still soaked from my earlier workout. The Subski paddle system gives you the fastest workout, the toughest workout in the shortest period of time on the water. Hey, this is Guy at Subski with a quick update on what's going on with the Subski paddle track system. For those of you who have been following us, you noticed that at one time we had a kayak paddle. Not using that anymore. And then we upgraded to a lighter weight paddle and we were at a 45 degree angle. That's out. You remember we had a yellow pole with a round grip on it? No more. The box we had with those ugly, whatever you want to call that, house or something like that, out of the picture. And this wide, this wide unit here, now we've narrowed that by an inch and a quarter. And this is what we do have. We've got the new Subski paddle system with a sleeker design with real poles that are adjustable. The mechanism is the same. The user rotates the paddle into the water, pushes back, the paddle goes forward at the end of the at the end of the stroke, the spring brings the paddle out of the water and the user pulls it forward. Repeats this as often as he likes. Very simple mechanism. Engaging the paddle is not that difficult because we've got this here. You can either uh, do it with your thumb or you can put your hand over the top of it and do it like this to get the water so you can do different uh, moves to get the paddle engaged in the water and also different lengths it's adjustable also if you've looked at any of the videos there's reverse where you can put the paddle in the back and pull it forward and that allows you to turn or go in reverse we have it staged so it goes back off the end of the board because this allows the paddle board user to stand in the proper position in the board and give him the optimum amount of stroke. As a matter of fact, the standard track was 64 inches long. The standard track is now going to be 72 inches long for someone who's about six feet tall because we have found that over a period of time we have become accustomed to a 60 odd inch stroke and we can go further. So uh, we believe a 72 inch is going to be the standard, a 64 inch for uh, shorter people, perhaps young ladies. And then also for tall people, we'll go to a, an 84-inch uh, track or an 80-inch track, depending. And uh, so that's it. We should have some new PVC coming in to replace this uh, ugly yellow stuff on there and should have a new demo video and everything ready to go early next week. See you with our next communication. Thanks. This is Guy at Subski. Setting up the camera for the shot. Okay, I know. I'm not putting that sand on my feet. I see. Well, hey, this is Guy with the Subski, and we're really into uncharted territory now. I mean, in the process of putting Velcro on the board, we said, why should we just have the Velcro all the way at the back? And now we've gone all the way to the front. And why did we do that? Well, we thought you might want to put your cooler there. Instead of bungeeing it down, just use some Velcro. Put it on there, your keys, put the Velcro on your keys, just throw them down on the top of the subski, and that's all you gotta think of. Now, once we got the, we said, hey, wait a second, why don't we put the tracks at the front of the subski? Wouldn't that be fun? And then we can pull ourselves forward. So, who the hell knows?
tolerances are that way because of the way we are manufacturing and not the way the perfect. In order to reduce the size of the 7 inch wide plastic base, I use plastic and aluminum to create a narrower track. From a design standpoint, this was a big improvement, but it also altered the dynamic relationship with all the components and the mechanism no longer slid along the track the way the earlier design had worked. Intuitively, instantaneously, I mean, so that's cool. Now I've got a couple other anchor holes drilled in it so the tracks hang off about a foot off the back so he won't reach the back end of the stroke. So I've got holes drilled in it. Like there's a couple of issues. Yeah. The actual motion. Yep. One of them is the fact that the sticks are straight. You notice that in the top of the stroke it's like this and the bottom of the stroke it's like that. Right. It's not sliding smoothly. I thought so. Yeah, and without that it's no good. No, I, I knew there was a giant step backwards. Uh, yeah. No, if like the, the thing is, it's like it's loose. The bolts, like for the. Well, it's getting because it's not. It's, it's not it's submerging in the not water. Where? With the track. What do you mean? It's getting off angle. At the same time I was working on the track, I became aware that many paddle boarders were using their boards for fishing. I thought that my track might be useful in that regard. designed a platform system that would strap onto a board and allow the user to attach chairs, coolers, and fishing rod holders. Perfect for any type fishing trip. Whether you're standing, sitting, or relaxing, subtracks can be customized for any fishing outing. And for those far away fishing spots, attach a trolling motor to the mounting bar and get there fast. Subtracks, taking paddleboard fishing to a whole new level. Get yours today. It was a good design, worked perfectly, but it weighed 28 pounds and was far too expensive to produce. I finally came up with a solution to the mechanism for not sliding properly. I installed stainless steel ball bearings to the slide box. Is that we are not sliding plastic against aluminum or plastic against plastic. We have stainless steel bearings on our little uh, truck here that you know contains the paddle, and then this rides in a track very smoothly with very little resistance. So um, that's where we are with the development of it. We haven't embedded it in a board yet. We haven't. Uh, um, Gotten any further than this, but this is where we are with the, the process. But uh, you know, I was looking out to see if you might be interested. I don't know if you knew, we were contacted by Adventure Capitalists, which is a, uh, I guess, a spin-off of Shark Tank from CNBC, to have this product um, on their show. Um, but they needed a, uh, you know, a shelf-ready product, and unfortunately, uh, we aren't there yet. While figuring out the problems with the paddle system, I had an opportunity to edit a documentary film about a man with cerebral palsy. I spent two years on the project going through over 500 hours of videos that had been filmed by the man's father and I put that together with interviews of family members, teachers and caregivers to create Micah's presence. It's a very interesting story and I think you should check it out. Visit micaspresence.com to watch the trailer and learn all about it. Now that I have completed the film, I am back to work on the Subski. We had a board manufactured with slots for the tracks to fit into and began further tests. 
At the same time, we hired a product design firm to turn the garage prototype into a real product. I hopefully you can see this. The quad rail slide track was designed to eliminate the ball bearings used with the Subski prototype pole paddles in order to reduce noise and corrosion and lower the cost. This patented design allows the paddle slide box to travel up and down the track in a low friction environment. When rotational energy is applied, one side of the slide box rides on a lower rail and one side rides on an upper rail. Upon release, the slide box returns to its original position, riding on the lower two rails. Sand and debris can settle at the bottom of the track and not impair the operation, and can be washed out even while in use. This same track can be used to attach anchor blocks, which slide up and down the track, lock anywhere in place, and have accessories attached. The track can be mounted vertically, in this configuration, the outer track rides on the sides of its rails on the inner slide. This could possibly be a replacement for drawer slides in some applications. The track can also be mounted at an angle should the need arise, with the inner slide mount riding on the lower two rails. Mounting the track assembly horizontally with the inner slide as the base could possibly replace undermount drawer slides in some applications. The track can be mounted on the ceiling for suspension, with the inner slide riding on the lower two rails. The track can also be mounted in the ceiling and be covered, leaving only the slot for the inner slide mount. With the track mounted in the vertical position with the opening for the inner slide at the bottom rather than the side, could be used to suspend sliding doors, especially where moisture could have a detrimental effect, such as showers or outdoor sheds. The quad rail track, a versatile design for replacing ball bearings in a low friction environment. Yeah. Did you get enough? Yeah. It works good. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of it. This thing's so cool. Yeah. We, yeah. So we need to make, do we need to make one that's small enough that you guys can do, right? Yeah. All right. So uh, we're, we'll go home and we'll get to work on that right away. You would do that? If we got a board that was small enough for you guys to do that? Can you guys make it on surfboards? Yes. That is on surfboards.